shark movies. They're a dime a dozen, man. There's so many shitty shark movies out there that it's pretty much impossible to keep track of that shit anymore. But the amount of good, hell, even decent shark movies, I can literally count on one hand. Thankfully, Deep Blue Sea is on that one hand. It was released in 1999 and was directed by Rennie Harlan, who in the past has made some entertaining movies like Cliffhanger and Die Hard 2, but now makes cancer like The Legend of Hercules. Oh god. So out in the middle of the ocean, which seems like an awful fucking place to have a workplace, lies a research facility called Aquatica, where scientists are experimenting on sharks in an effort to create a pill to cure Alzheimer's. In order to do this, Dr. Susan McAllister uses genetic engineering to increase the size of the shark's brains, thus making the shark smarter, which is the only way to get her precious serum, but at the expense of the three research sharks being able to do this kind of shit. Tell me I didn't see that. They recognize that gun. It's impossible. Sharks do not swim backwards, they can't. Seems like a bad trade-off when you're out in the middle of the ocean, hundreds of miles from people. No way this could go wrong. Well, that dude from Thor gets too close to the shark and... God damn, do things ever go wrong. So now the team has to evacuate Thor dude from the facility in the middle of a brutal hurricane by helicopter, which totally goes according to plan. Something I want to point out here is that when the wire screws up and the dude falls into the water, it happens at 38 minutes, 20 seconds into the movie. It's not until 41 minutes, 10 seconds that the shark literally tosses his ass at the window to the research room. But the bastard is still conscious. He's been underwater for nearly 3 minutes and managed to hold his breath that long, with a missing arm and massive blood loss. Don't try and tell me that oxygen mask he has on is keeping him alive. Get real. That shit ain't standard issued scuba diving gear. From this point, you can pretty much figure out the course of the rest of the movie. The sharks now have a convenient way to get into the facility where all them scrumptious god-playing humans are. The humans' goals? Don't get chomped. Cause god forbid the sharks using their super intelligence don't just free willy themselves over the facility fences. I mean, it's not like one of the sharks already did that shit. Oh. Deep Blue Sea came out at a time when major studios were still making use of practical effects, and holy shit. I mean, look at this stuff. Those effects are incredible. Those could easily pass as real sharks. But then when they switch over to using the fully animated CGI sharks, it's like someone took a picture-perfect model and then took a giant dump on her face. Not only is it awful, but the quality of the awfulness seems to differ from shot to shot. Like, for example, huge spoilers here, the scene where Samuel Jackson is grabbed by the shark is some of the fuckest shit I've ever seen, but when the sharks under the water are tearing him apart, it doesn't look nearly as bad, but still not too great. Apparently something like 14 different special effects houses worked on the shark, so it's kind of impossible to really tell who screwed the pooch the hardest here. Fun fact, and again spoilers, the three sharks in this movie suffer fates directly inspired by the Jaws movies. One of the sharks is blown up in a scene very reminiscent of Jaws' ending, one of the sharks gets electrocuted to death like in Jaws 2, and the other shark is torched by an explosion. There's even a scene where Carter, played by Thomas Jane, pulls a license plate out of a tiger shark's mouth, which just so happens to be the same plate pulled from the gut of the tiger shark in Jaws. I mean, if you're gonna make a shark movie, why not pay homage to the best one ever made, right? I was six when I saw this movie, and I got to see it in the best way possible. At my hometown's big drive-in theater, surrounded by the smell of nature and car exhaust, listening to the movie's audio through my mom's car speakers. My nostalgic love for this movie is incredibly strong, and yeah, it ain't perfect, but as far as shark movies go, this is easily one of the better ones. It's an entertaining, competently made, big-budget B-movie, basically. Play the movie. 